I just created a new project and I haven't even loaded my footage in. The first step I'm gonna take is actually to organize and load that footage. So right here in my media pool, I'm gonna create two new bins. One new bin is gonna be called A-Roll and the other new bin is gonna be called B-Roll. If you're not familiar, A-Roll is just usually your talking head footage, you talking at the camera, and B-Roll is basically anything you're putting on top of that. Clips of the subject matter or screen captures or anything like that that's an additional visual other than your face. And then for example, I'll just grab this footage from a video I did the other day about the four big communication mistakes I see YouTubers make and we'll throw that right into the A-Roll. And usually I'd have more footage than that and you may or may not, but let's go ahead into the cut page for step two where we're gonna do our rough cut. The rough cut is just that, it can be pretty rough. All you're doing is chopping out silences and selecting the takes you've made of certain phrases or scenes or whatever that you actually wanna keep and getting those onto your timeline. Here was my actual good if take. You're just getting started on YouTube, there's a really big chance you're making one of the- Okay, and I know that it ended right here. So I will grab that, I'll throw that into the timeline. Okay, so now I've got two clips in the timeline. Note, I wasn't super, super precise about it. I just wanna get the story basically laid out on the timeline. And then step three is actually optional for most people, especially if you're just shooting on a GoPro or a phone, for sure. Messing with the color may not give you that much benefit, but for me, it's oftentimes my third step. And you can already see the difference in my skin and how it pops just with a little bit of color work. But if you're not messing with color, you can skip right on to step four, which is the fine cut. In the fine cut, what I'm looking for are pauses, loud breaths, anything that's just not helpful to the story itself. And I'm gonna cut that out. I'm also gonna check in between clips to make sure there's not any extra space that doesn't need to be there. So you can see right here between these two clips, there's actually a big bunch of space. So I cut that out just so there's a little less space in between and it feels more smooth. In the fine cut, you're doing the last bit of cutting you wanna do before you start adding in. Cause once you start adding in, cutting things becomes more complicated. After the rough and fine cut are done, Here's what the rest of your edit's about. You want to keep it interesting. Yes, you need to tell a story. Yes, you need to make sure it flows, but if it's not interesting, people don't stick around. The amount of stuff going on in your video helps to increase your watch time, which is a humongous deal for YouTube. And I'm actually gonna be doing a video all about how people like Mr. Beast get amazing watch time on their videos. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that when it comes out. The next step is actually not in the editing software. The next step is me figuring out what B-roll I wanna put into this thing. What often happens is you get to editing, you're working on the project, and as you get it all into shape, you're like, oh, this would be a cool piece of B-roll here. Oh, if I had a clip of this here, or this GIF here, or this emoji here, it's not planned. Planning takes time, but in the long run, it saves you time. So what I do is after I've got my fine cut down, down. I'm gonna go through and listen. I'm gonna scrub through my whole project. Now I usually do that at double speed and you'll see I've also got this Google Doc up here. And in this Google Doc, as it's playing, I'm just gonna type whatever images or video I'm looking for. If you're just getting started on YouTube, getting started. Chance you're making more I'm gonna to write started. Okay, I'm looking for a start line or something like that. I still, I'm gonna break down the four biggest communication mistakes. Mistakes, okay. To so I'm gonna look for something about mistakes, all right? So let's just pretend this is my whole video and I'm looking for two pieces of B-roll. Write this down because this is really key. I'm gonna open up two tabs. One is gonna be pexels.com. You can see right here, this is a great place to find free B-roll. It's amazing. And I'm gonna open up unsplash.com, which is a wonderful place for free images that you can use as B-roll. And the first things that I was looking for were start or started. So let me look for start. I'm just gonna search start and I'm gonna click on videos and see what we've got here. We've got a key going into an ignition. That's pretty good for starting. So I'm gonna go ahead and download that. And here you can donate to the person who's made it. This video was by Rob Cott. And I would encourage you guys, if there's an artist that you're getting a lot of great content from, go ahead and consider supporting them as well. But it's all free. And I know I was also looking for mistakes. Now I can do that here. If I look mistakes, I would find here mistake with the delete. Let's see, this is a video. Let's see what it looks like. Looks like they're gonna put the delete over the mistake to get rid of the mistake. That could kind of work because I'm saying how I'm gonna fix them in this video. Let me go ahead and download this. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go back to where I have my folders for A-roll and B-roll. And then just from my downloads folder, move all those videos into the B-roll. Now I can hit the next step, which is to add the B-roll in. Now, as you're going through here, you might also consider putting markers. Just typing M will do it automatically with a blue marker and resolve wherever you wanna put B-roll. So I know there's a marker right here. It's gonna be quick. So I want it to start where the action is starting. So here's where the key actually starts going into the ignition. My in point goes there and now I've got my clip and I'm gonna drag it right here to where my marker was and then play through. Let's see, that looks okay, right? Fine, but what if I wanted to make it a little smoother? When I'm putting my B-roll in, I just go over here to dynamic zoom Click on that and make it ease in and out. This makes the curve of the zoom much smoother. And let's see how that looks. YouTube, there's a really big chance you're making That's just smoother. So now I've got that clip in. I can do the same thing with this erase clip and just again, go through the whole timeline 
and adding your B-roll. So the B-roll was the base layer of you keeping things interested in your video. And there's a few other things we can do, but we want to start with what has the biggest impact for the least amount of effort first. So the next thing to do is to put in punches and zooms. Now the easiest way to do this is actually to use adjustment clips. So in DaVinci Resolve at least we can just grab an adjustment clip out of the effects library, make it the size we want it. I know that I'm going to want to punch in from time to time as the video cuts. So right oh, here I want to go a little closer video, when it cuts. Plus, when you change the zoom, it makes it feel smoother for your audience. So, I'm going to put this right here up against it. Make the zoom like 1.15. Make sure the eye level is about the same as where it was. And now, when I cut, it's a little smoother. It feels like a slightly different scene. And what's really cool is because it's an adjustment clip, I can just either copy and paste or hold alt and drag it over to the next cut. So that when I get here, and I'm going to show you how to fix it. It punches in again. This is, again, all about keeping it visually interesting for your audience. But those are hard cut punches. What about smooth zoom things? I got you. You can do two things. One, you can take your video clip, and whenever you want the animation to happen, you know, make a separate cut here, and just go over to dynamic zoom, make it easy in and out, just like you did on the B-roll, and see what happens. If you're just getting started on That's okay. It's not too bad, right? But I do want to tell you, Mr. Alex Tech has an amazing tool called Magic Zoom. I think... It's one of his free downloads. If you haven't checked him out for DaVinci Resolve, I'm going to put his link down below. After this video, go check him out. The guy is solid for DaVinci tutorials. And with an adjustment clip that he actually gives really good instructions on, you can have the smoothest of zooms. Et voila, the smooth zoom. On YouTube, and then the B-roll. We're already starting to make things a little more interesting. So you can go ahead and populate those punches and zooms into places where you need something visually interesting. And you keep adding things that are interesting in step eight where you're going to add your graphics and CTAs. Now, usually for me, I don't add a lot of like gimmicky graphics and stuff, some because I can be cheesy, but it's up to you what your audience is, what your niche is. You've got to feel that out. For me, most of it's just adding visual CTAs. So let's say somewhere around here I mentioned subscribing. I can go ahead and grab this and put it in there and it's in and I don't have to worry about it. It's set. And let's say later in the video I mentioned there was a link below. Well, I can just grab this and put it right in there. Again, adding another layer of things that make it more visually interesting than just the video by itself. Your people don't want to just watch your face. They want to be entertained while they're being educated. I actually find that it's better if you plan your CTAs ahead of time so that you know what things you're going to say in your video before you get in the edit and you're just trying to find a place to put them. A big way to help with that is the Creator People video planner I've got here. I'm also using, as I'm going, the editing checklist. Now, you can pick this editing checklist up right now from creatorpeople.com. I'll put the link in the description down below. Or you can get it bundled with the video planner together for a special price. These are the same documents that I use in my one-on-one -on -one coaching program. And if that's something you're interested, you can find information on that on the website as well and start with a free creator console. But the next step in your editing workflow is going to be adding one more layer of things that keeps it interesting and that's text. Now this can seem like a really time consuming thing but I've got a really quick trick that saves me a lot of time. See one of the things you want to do with text is keep it pretty punchy. You don't want to have it long and drawn out unless it's that kind of vibe of a video. This is not and probably most of yours shouldn't be either. So I'm just going to go over to my text and grab a text plus clip and put it right over here where I want it. I want it way shorter than that. Right here I know I want to say four mistakes and I want to do it in text to accentuate the words I'm saying, make it both a visual and an auditory signal to my audience. I'm just going to go over here and grab the font that I like to use, which for me is frequently Gotham Black. I'm going to make sure the size is right. Four. I'm going to cut it. I've already got the font and I've got the positioning I want. So four. Go over here to the next thing. Big. And here I want it to say mistakes. And I'll type mistakes. And so all I've done is brought one clip in set the parameters, the font, the size, the position, and I can even go in and accent the word big, right? I could be like, no, big, All right? So now it's four mistakes I see people make. Four big mistakes. That didn't take that long. If I want to repeat this pattern, I can copy it, paste it somewhere else in there, or alt drag it. I can change the font. I can change the color of the individual words, and it's a great way to just accent what it is you're saying. Sometimes you need text in there so that people can understand what it is you're doing, but try not to have too much. Try to keep it pretty simple. I think that helps with comprehension a lot. The next step is to put in your sound effects and your voiceover. Now, voiceover may not be applicable to everybody. If you're interested in seeing a video on how to do voiceover with DaVinci Resolve, that's a whole other topic. Let me know in the comments below and maybe we can do one of those soon. But the sound effects should be applicable to most people. And a great example might be where I have this glitch effect with the text that says all links below. So what I'm gonna do is go over here to some sounds that I've got saved. I've got this sci-fi sound. I'm gonna just grab that, put it right there, and see how that feels. In this video, I'm gonna break down the four biggest yeah, communication Yeah, and that kind of adds something to the effect with. of the text coming on screen. Maybe it's sliding on screen. Maybe then, although this doesn't apply here, you could grab a golf swing and throw that on there. In this video, I'm gonna break down. Right, that would have made sense if it slid on the screen. 
After the sound effects, the next step is the music. Now, I think that most videos should incorporate some amount of music, but you've really gotta feel out what your audience wants and how you deliver it to know how much that is. I usually don't have music all throughout my video. I usually do have a little bit on the front end as it adds to that energy that you start with. I like to say that you've got three seconds to earn five seconds, to earn 10 seconds, to earn 30 seconds, to earn more of their watch time. Because if you don't have it really interesting from the beginning, oftentimes people just click away. So I'm gonna grab this little snippet of music I've got here. This is actually super important, guys. You don't wanna leave your music at the normal level because your vocals probably aren't anywhere near that. I usually crank music down to about negative 20 decibels from where it was, 20, 19 to 22, somewhere in that range. And note, it actually helps with the fact that I've got that zoom. It's like, boom, here's all this energy happening. And the next step is super critical, guys. Pay attention. You must do a final review. I can't tell you how many times I've made the mistake of completing my entire video and then I misspelled something or I forgot a clip and it went up online and it didn't make sense. That's a problem you don't want to run into. You want to watch the whole thing through again to make sure you really love it. Now, the biggest reason people don't tend to love their final product is actually a lack of planning on the front end. Now I've actually got a free video tutorial that shows you how to outline your content in such a way that people actually want to watch all the way through. So after you subscribe, go ahead and click here to watch that.